morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. Today, again, walking and talking here on the beautiful boulevard in Torrevieja, Spain, guys. The sea is over there. I'm living somewhere over there. Uh, guys, in today's video, I'm going to keep it short because I have special news at the end. So keep watching till the end because the special news is very important. Short but powerful video. Four amazing Bitcoin charts. A trading tip, a travel tip, answering a question, talking about the news, of course, and giving an inspirational quote at the end. Let's quickly jump into the charts to show you exactly what is happening to Bitcoin today. The first chart for the day, guys, that we're going to talk about is this amazing uh, day chart. I'm not going to zoom in too much because the day chart we have been handling now for a couple of days. And look how we are fighting the top resistance line there of that uh, bullish flag pattern again with a target of around 80k why and um, it's going to go to probably 1.272 which is 83k and maybe even extend to 1.68 uh, 618 uh, level of Fibonacci retracement guys because that's the pole length so that area over there should be the target for Bitcoin between 83k and 94k guys amazing flag pattern of course we are fighting the top of that resistance line we are also fighting with that the 50 day moving average that green line all of it is falling into place we are fighting this huge resistance that we need to break to see that explosive move in bitcoin but i will zoom out a little bit to show you some more interesting charts that also show you the same picture and on the bottom we can see the macd there is a bullish cross happening and that will lead into that first green bar and of course many more to come probably because we always go to go in these waves with the MACD green to red green to red to green and when it becomes green then we have the possibility and the bullishness in the market also the RSI did bottom out to make that move and it can be a huge move it can be a 10 to 20k move in Bitcoin as we have seen those before that will take all the way into May guys so it's not going to happen today or tomorrow it could take all the way into May on this chart guys you can see the cost of production of bitcoin at the moment so how much does it cost the miners to mine some bitcoins at the moment the electrical cost is 77.4k the miner price at the moment is around 114,000 us dollar per bitcoin we have a production cost of 128,000 us dollar per bitcoin we have the electoral cost of 77,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. And we have the Bitcoin price at 64, 63, 64,000 US dollar. You do understand what this means. When these costs all rise, the miners are mining Bitcoin with a loss because the thing that they are mining is less valuable as the cost they have for the creation of those Bitcoins. So the Bitcoin price will need to double very quickly to come above all these costs and that has happened each and every time whenever we were too close to these red orange lines we exploded up with the price close in the bear market up in the bull market close in the bear market the halving just happened we will go up now in the second part of the bull market interesting chart then, of course, the Bitcoin spiral, the block time, the rational root chart. Yes, of course, continuing as always. And every time we think that this beautiful orange line can't go into the next circle. And every time it does go into the next circle. So we can see that the peaks are always around these numbers over here. And so there's around 78.75k blocks. That's when we have seen the peaks last couple of bull markets the bottoms we've seen around 131.25k blocks somewhere in that area the halving of course always takes place over here so now we will see in this next part of the chart so this side the right side of this spiral we will see those new autumn highs coming in these are the blue dots that's all the autumn highs that we saw during the previous bull markets. So this bull market now is going to continue this line. We don't know exactly how the line is going to run, but let me give you an example. 
So for example, this line could go like this, a little bit closer, a little bit up again. This is the 100 K level, that gray line that we could surpass, you know, and then of course we could come below it again and we close here and then the peak would even be like higher like this and then we continue. So then the peak would be over here, of course. And this would be the first time maybe we cross that 100 K level just in that area where, you know, we already created all the highs in the previous bull market as well. Something like that. Now, this is all like sloppy hands drawing, but the spiral has been continuing to grow outside more and more. So we will see this grow outside more and more. We will go into the next thing as well, maybe even to $1 million in the bull markets after this one, guys. Amazing chart. Then this chart, guys, this chart is just showing the half of epoch candle. So every halving has a huge candle, a uh, green candle, of course, because we only have gone up. Uh, this halving also stopped at a beautiful price, a close of 63,977. The first halving closed at $12, then $640, then $8,000, now $63,000. The next halving, somewhere in 2028, will close as well at a new price that will be higher than 63,000 US dollar. That will probably be probably somewhere around 200,000 US dollar in the next halving in uh, 2028, probably May as I can, as far as I can see at the moment. So everything you buy around these levels, if you're able to hold it for four years until the next halving, you will be in a shit little profit again because Bitcoin will be between like 100 and 200K. So amazing times ahead still for Bitcoin. Yes, it is still a good moment to buy. Here in this chart, we can see uh, the Bitcoin phases. The euphoria phase is that the brownish phase. That's the phase that you need to start uh, worry a little bit about the price. We are going to steep too fast. That is the moment you need to cash out into stable coins. But at the moment, we are just celebrating the start of the summer and in that summer we will go higher and higher and higher and that last tiny bit will be the euphoria bull phase that is the moment you need to get out guys that's the moment you need to exchange into stable coins to buy back a shitload of bitcoins back in that bear market and then of course the bear market bottom it's a green area that we don't see it on the chart but as you can see that green area the bear that's the bear market bottom. That's the bear market bottom. That's the moment you should be adding to your Bitcoins again. Selling a four-year bull, buying bear market back. That's the four-year cycle you need to play. I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, short term, we can see still we try to break that 50-day moving average, the top of that bullish flag pattern. If we break that, we will see an explosive move, I believe, still to 77 to 80K, guys. Long term, amazing to see where we are in this four year cycle. This is the moment you should be all in or going all in because we can still double from here. It's easy from Bitcoin to go from 65K to 130K in the next 12 to 18 months. Yes, exactly, you heard it right, 12 to 18 months, as I think that the bull market top will be somewhere between September and December 2025. Of course, it can also be earlier, but that is at least what I think if I look back into the previous bull markets, because it would always take 17 to 18 months, sometimes even 16 months uh, after halving till the bull market top, guys. I'm gonna stand here down below on this beautiful part next to the sea so you can see the waves and hear the waves while I will talk to you about Bitcoin, blockchain and life, guys. But always remember in Bitcoin to zoom out, look at that bigger picture. It is very important that you understand that four year cycle. There will be a bearish moment, 12 months long. There will be a kind of sideways movement, also around 12 months. But those other 24 months are bullish as fuck. And where are we now? We are in those other 24 months. We are in the next 12 to 18 months of bullishness. It will lead into euphoria at the end that you will all think you can buy the world, you can conquer the world, you will own the world. That is a euphoric feeling that you will have when Bitcoin is stopping out. That is the feeling that you need to realize, hey, hmm, let's start to take some profits because now I really think that Bitcoin is going to the moon and back in this bull market. And mostly that is the moment when we turn around, you should be able to take a profit at that moment because you're a subscriber to this channel. And yes, I will tell you when I will start to take profit as well, guys. Now, let's jump into the trading tip. The trading tip, guys, is also answering one of the questions because the question was, Didi, would you consider staking? 
So the trading tip for today is, yes, I would definitely consider staking. Definitely in the bull market. In the bull market, to be very honest, I'm uh, staking all kinds of projects. So not only USDT. For example, the Apex token from Apex Pro Exchange, I've been staking that through the whole bear and bull market. So there is many projects that I stake because I want to multiply that token. And staking is the easiest way to multiply that token because I'm getting like 14 to even 21% sometimes on those tokens. In the bear market, I don't stake any of those tokens. The only token I will stake in the bear market would be USDT or any other staple coin because I want to increase my stable coins in the bear market as much as possible, collect as much as possible USDT. Maybe you do that through working and a job, I do that through staking. So bear market, 12 months, accumulating a shitload of USDT to be able at the bear market bottom to buy a shitload of Bitcoin. That's how it works. So staking in the bull market, I will do all kinds of projects, staking in the bear market, I will only stake USDT and other stable coins when possible, guys. The travel tip from today, guys, comes also from one of the questions. The question was, if you travel so much, Didi, what kind of mobile phone package do you have? Because roaming is really expensive if you do that like all over the world. Of course, we are not roaming our, our package all over the world. So we still have a Dutch uh, phone subscription, which is called KPN. So in full Europe, we can call like freely. There is no cost involved. When we travel, for example, to Thailand, we will use an eSIM card. Mostly the Thai local eSIMs or the Mexican local eSIMs. And sometimes we also take these international SIM cards of Holafly, for example. You can use an eSIM while you're using your normal SIM card as well. So you have a dual SIM because of using a physical one and an eSIM. And that's the most simple way because your normal SIM card, you're tied to all your debit cards and everything. Every time when you need to send something, you will get a you know confirmation in your original telephone number. You will need that SIM card now and then. So for us, the simplest solution is to use eSIMs. In Thailand, an eSIM is around 10 euros a month and you have unlimited data. So you can do all the calls, all the chats, all the watching of YouTube services, all for 10 euros a month. That Mexico, same kind of price, all over the world. It's between five and $15 per month, and you have unlimited data. And you still have your local SIM card in your telephone, so your parents and grandparents and friends and colleagues can still reach you on your uh, traditional number, and you can still uh, receive those SMS texts from all the debit cards and all the websites that you used your original number uh, to sign up to, but you also have the data of that local country through an eSIM, so you can do whatever you want without using the roaming. So that's the solution that we use as a family. If you have other solution, then let it know down below. But for me, eSIM, for example, Holofly or any other local one is the solution to having a dual SIM setup in your iPhone or Android phone. That was the travel tip. Then there was another question of one of the followers, and that question, I hope the sound of the wave is not too disturbing, guys, but you want wave sounds, you have wave sounds now. Then there was a question of one of the followers about um, if you own Bitcoins in a wallet that was KYC, you know, because you needed to come, because you need to do complete KYC setup. So let's say the government knows that your Bitcoins are in a certain wallet. How do, how do I get rid of that KYC wallet into a non-KYC wallet? in a creative way. I think that's the question. Of course, there's many possibilities to do that. One of the possibilities is a coin mixer wallet. So you will be sending from your KYC wallet into a new non-custodial, non-KYC wallet, for example, Samurai wallet or Wasabi wallet. They have a coin mixer built in. From that moment, you can start to coin mix your tokens. That is one of the solutions. It's not the most easy solution, but at least it is a solution to make those tokens disappear. Another creative way could be that you're using your KYC tokens to buy, for example, an NFT. And it is an NFT of like, like 100,000 US dollar, whatever. There's many NFTs that have that value. And that NFT, you will sell with a loss to a new wallet that is owned by, for example, your wife or your whatever, your child, and you're selling that with a huge loss of 90K. So by then, of the 100K of value that had in that wallet, only 10K is left because you sold that thing only for 10K. So you sold it with 90K loss. Now you have an NFT in this new wallet, that new wallet that is owned by your wife or your children, but nobody knows that because that is a non-custodial, non-QVC, self-created wallet 
in MetaMask or something. Nobody knows it's owned by your wife. It then looks like you sold your NFT with a loss of 90K to a new person of a wallet that is anonymous, and that new person is able to sell that NFT again with profit. So you still have your 10K in your traditional wallet. You can tell the tax companies and your governments, ah, yeah, I bought an NFT, but I sold it only for 10K because the price was dropping, so I lost a shitload, you know? So yeah, I made 90K loss, and that NFT will be in a new wallet that is also owned by your family or whatever, and you will be able to sell it over there. And then, of course, the money is also gone into a non-KYC, non-custodial wallet. Many other possibilities, of course. Let me and all the followers know down below what kind of solutions you have uh, to make your KYC Bitcoin disappear into a non-KYC setup. There is many of them and I will add some courses to the VIP course section uh, on how you could do it in a very creative way. But let me know down below what is your solution to make KYC non-KYC. Let's make some magic happen for all of us out there. Let's together fight that centralization, that KYC, AML, all that shit that they want to force upon us. Let's fight it collective and share with each other how we, how you, how you make your KYC Bitcoins disappear into non-KYC setups. The news for today, guys, is of course that my daughter Juna has her birthday. She's turning 17 today. Uh, Juna, happy birthday. I love you to the moon and back. And yes, of course, you're not editing this video today on your birthday. You're just enjoying your presence and the beautiful day that we have planned for you. Uh, guys, it's just amazing to have seen Juna grown from a very shy girl that even didn't want to be on camera or on the Amazon Prime show anymore into this woman, evolving into this woman that is really powerful. She really knows what she wants. She is a really strong woman. She's very stubborn, but I see that as a strength because she really knows what she wants and she's going for that and she's not giving up anything for that. I think it's really strong to be stubborn now and then, guys. Juna's passions are all about sports and partying and makeup and all that stuff, but she has a new passion and her new passion now is a little bit more adrenaline. She wants to do more cool stuff, more dangerous stuff. So her question yesterday was, Daddy, can I jump out of an airplane uh, sky jumping? And are you gonna join me? And I was like, oh shit, joining her, jumping out of a fucking plane. I don't know. Jumping out of a plane is not something that is on my list. It was on my bucket list when I was younger, but the older that you get, like it's more like, okay, do I still want to jump out of a plane? Is this still fun? <laughs> is bungee jumping still fun? Regina, I promise you, if you want to jump out of a plane, I will join you in jumping out of a plane. I will overcome my fears <laughs> of the parachute not opening or something like that. <laughs> you know the video we talked about, the fears? Okay, this is one of the fears. I need to jump out of a plane. I already have a little bit fear of heights. And now I need to go up with a plane and jump out of the plane while I normally just uh, prefer to travel luxury in an Emirates airplane while watching some videos. <laughs> now I need to jump out of it. We are not going to do that today. Today we're going to do some other cool stuff with you um, here in an adventure park. And of course we are going to have some uh, cake and of course a small party. And later this year we will uh, throw a family party because we're all having our birthdays in April and May and June. So we do a collective big party somewhere uh, with all friends and family guys. Now, so that was the news for the day. My daughter Juna turning 17 years old. We have been traveling now eight years of her life eight years of her life. She has almost been traveling 50% of her life. We have celebrated Juna's birthday in Thailand, in the Netherlands, in Mexico, in Portugal, in Spain. Uh, I don't know exactly which places anymore, but I think Juna's birthday was celebrated in the most different places all over the world from all the children that I know, guys. Uh, happy birthday, darling. I really love you to the moon and back. We're gonna make a special day out of this. Uh, that was the news of today. Bitcoin Juna from Amazon Primes, hashtag all in the Bitcoin family, has her birthday today. She's turning 17. Of course, her fake ID says 18 or 19 because then uh, that's the way she enters the clubs. <laughs> now, let's jump into the next part. And the next part, guys, is the inspirational part. While I still have the beautiful sound of these waves, uh, the inspirational part also has to do with Juna because Juna was always doubting to start something. You know, she was always, what do I want? What, when do I want to start? When do I want to go do Muay Thai? You know, there was always this 
um, there was always this small kind of bridge in between what she wanted and, and what she was Paul talking about. And, and then she asked me, Dad, what is your secret? How do you just do all, all of those things? Yeah, aside of jumping out of an the airplane, then <laughs> all of the things I almost did. Um, and then I told her, it's very simple. To get started, you need to quit talking and start doing. You can talk about a lot of things, you can talk to talk, but if you don't walk the walk, you're not starting. To start, you need to walk the walk. And it also counts for a lot of Bitcoiners out there. You can talk the talk, you can talk about, I own a little bit Bitcoin, I own Bitcoin, I support Bitcoin, I have a little bit Bitcoin, I have a Bitcoin company with a bank account. Or you can walk the walk. You can walk the walk unbanked. You can be a real hardcore true Bitcoiner by walking the walk, not talking the talk. You should be all in Bitcoin. Like Greg Wright, for example, pretending to be Satoshi Nakamoto while he owns a bank account with 8 million US dollar on it. That's not a Bitcoiner, that's a shitcoiner. Because the biggest shitcoins are the Euro, the dollar, and all the other fiat currencies that don't have any tokenomics. They are being printed out of thin air. That is the real hardcore shitcoins. So that is how I told you now how to start doing things. Quit talking and start doing. Don't talk about your passions. Don't talk about what you would love to do. Start doing your passions. Start doing what you love to do on a daily basis. And then you grow slowly into that person that does whatever he or she wants every day. Quit talking, start doing. That's the inspirational quote for today. I will keep it short but powerful because I need to go home and now prepare Juna's breakfast because we always give breakfast on bed, guys. Hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the charts. Let me know what you think about all the tips. Let me know what you thought about all the answers I've given to your questions. Oh, the sun is really beautiful. It's going to be an amazing day. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below this video. And of course, it would be amazing if you congratulate Juna with her 17th birthday. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing day. See you tomorrow again. Bam.